In this video, I'd like to talk about positive and negative intervals of polynomials. So essentially, we will be looking at whether polynomials are positive or if they're negative in a certain interval between two or more of their zeros. So to better understand this, let's look at a specific example problem and we'll make a little bit of room. So we have some function and this function has zeros at three different points. And we need to know what is the sign of the function. So is it positive or is it negative on the interval from 3 sevenths to five? So x is going to be between these two different x values. So let's draw a quick sketch of this and then we can essentially think our way through this problem. So we'll label what the zeros are. So it looks like it goes through at 3 sevenths. So maybe that's right there. It goes through at five and this is not gonna be perfectly to scale but we can get a rough idea and that's at minus 3.5. So our function f of x, it's going to go through the x-axis at these points, that's what we mean by zeros here. This is when the function is equal to zero. And what we'll learn in a later video is that it's going to come up from below, come down through three sevenths and then go back up through five. So this is our function f of x. And one key point of a polynomial is that they are continuous. So we can say polynomials are continuous functions. So they don't have any breaks, they don't have any jumps. And because of that, we can figure out different properties between the zeros. And essentially, between two zeros, the polynomial function is either always positive or it's always negative. It's not going to be both between two consecutive zeros. And the way to understand that is to imagine what would happen if it wasn't always positive or negative. And the only way for that to work is if there was some type of break in the function. So if the function came up and then maybe had a break and then started again down here. This is essentially the only way that it can be both positive and negative between two consecutive zeros. There's no other way to do this. And since we know polynomial functions can't have these breaks, they're gonna be these smooth, continuous curves, we know this is not possible. So the main conclusion that you wanna take from this is that between two consecutive zeros, the polynomial function is either always above the x-axis, it's always positive, or between two consecutive zeros, it's always below the x-axis, or it's always a negative y-value. And with that information, we can figure out what the sign is on a certain interval. So we're looking at specifically this interval between 3 sevenths and 5. And on this interval, well, based on the graph, we know it's negative, but what we'll learn in a different video is how to determine if the function starts down below or if it starts above and weaves its way through like this. So that's something that we'll come to later in a topic called in behavior. But for now, we'll just assume we don't know that. So the way to determine if it's negative or if it's more like this and it's positive is to pick some value on this interval and just plug it into the function. And we don't wanna pick the endpoints in the interval because if we plug in three sevenths or five, the function is just equal to zero. So it's not gonna be positive or negative. So we have to pick some random value between three sevenths and five and plug it in. And if it's a positive number, then all the values on that interval are going to be positive. If it's a negative number, then everything on that interval will be negative or its y value will be negative. So let's just choose some value in here and plug it in. And let's try, try to be as simple as possible. Let's just choose when x is equal to one. So if we plug that into our function, we're looking at f of one. 
So we have 1 minus 5, then we have 2 times 1 plus 7, and we have 7 multiplied by 1 minus 3. And really, we don't care about the exact value, we just care if it's positive or negative. Now we could actually compute the value. So 1 minus 5, that's negative 4. Then we have 2 times 1 plus 7, so 2 plus 7, which is 9. And 7 times 1 is 7, minus 3 is 4. So you get 36 multiplied by negative 4, which is minus 144. But like I said, you don't actually have to find the exact value. What you really need to do is just look at each of these sets of parentheses and determine if it would be positive or negative. So for instance, 1 minus 5, that's negative. This is positive, and this is positive. So you have a negative number multiplied by two positive numbers. So the two positives will remain positive, and then positive times negative is negative. So just looking at their signs, you can determine this is a negative number. But if you really want, like I said, you can actually compute what that value is. But the main important point here is that we just determine that on this interval, if you plug in some random value, it's always going to be some negative number. If we plugged in one and we got a positive number, that would mean that the function looks more like that and it's always going to be some positive number. So just to summarize, the general strategy on these problems is to first maybe sketch a little picture of this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but having the zeros in will help you organize your thoughts. And then just pick a value on the interval and plug it in. Now, sometimes this interval is going to span multiple zeros. And so in that case, you have to be a little bit more careful and we'll look at that in a later problem. But when it's just one interval between two consecutive zeros, if we just plug in some value in the middle of it, if it's negative, then the function is always negative on that interval, which is what we have here. But if it was positive, then the function is always positive on that interval. Now, choice C, where it can be sometimes positive and sometimes negative, that would be the case if the question was asking, what is the sign on the interval between minus 3.5 and 5? And so in that case, it's not looking at two consecutive zeros, it's looking at three consecutive zeros. And you would have to check a value in this interval and in this interval to determine if it did switch sign going from one interval to the next. But you know at least between two consecutive zeros that it's always positive or always negative. 